All right. Best browser for privacy. This is one of the most misunderstood topics, I think, on the net. So I'm using Brave Browser here. Don't get that mixed up as me recommending Brave. It's just there's not that many great options when it comes to browsers. And Brave just kind of smells the not as bad as the rest, for the most part, depending on where you're at. So... This article right here says, right now, number one is Mozilla Firefox. I don't disagree with that. I think Firefox probably would be the best, but I probably would add some stuff to it. There's this great script. I think it's like uh, Firefox privacy scripts. Um, Simon on security made it. Yeah, that's it. This is a great script that I highly recommend. I'm going to link it in chat for everybody. If you're a Firefox, you're concerned about privacy, this is a great one. It even got mentioned in uh, privacytools.io, which is a great one when you're looking at different privacy-oriented browsers. Uh, this actually is not a bad uh, site to go to, but this one can run the script and make Firefox less snoopy and, and just overall a good privacy browser approach now i know they mentioned like libre wolf and some other ones i don't like these as much as the base mozilla with a privacy script just because the base mozilla does a better job of patching like bleeding edge like day zeros and stuff like that where some of these forks of firefox sometimes can be slow on the uh, the uptake and you could be vulnerable for longer. So from the security aspect, I like the more standard Firefox approach with privacy browser, but kind of interesting. Um, let's flip number two's Tor. Tor's just slow as crap and I just can't consider it as a normal browser. And I don't know from a security or privacy standpoint how useful it is because a lot of, I think the exit nodes, a lot of state actors are in this realm now to where the Tor network, I'm not 100% certain that it's perfectly private and perfectly secure as many people make it out to be. So Tor, it gets me a little iffy and the fact it's so slow also kind of like, eh, I have a hard time ever recommending Tor to anybody. It's okay and it's probably better than your stock browser, but... Uh, again, I, I worry about a lot of those exit nodes and stuff being run by state actors and some other f facts. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like on the fence about Tor. It can be a good thing, but it is very slow. So that's it. Epic. What the hell's Epic? If you're a Chrome user, easy to switch. Epic ships with privacy protections. Have I been sleeping on a new browser? Chat, you heard about Epic? Using incognito for privacy browsers, you still need Epic. How you're tracked. Epic. Privacy browser. What is this? No? No? Okay. I'm not the only one on this one. Um, Who are they? Built on Chromium like everybody else. It's backed as a product of Hidden Reflex, a software company founded by Alok Badawaja. Sorry, butchered that name. Uh, with a development team in Bangalore, Bangalore, India. Okay. Founder of Slashdot, blah, blah, blah. Grew up in Texas, Virginia, and Kansas. Hey, Kansas. I'm from Kansas. I'm a Kansas boy, born and raised. Studied philosophy, music, Princeton University. Previously, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll have to check that out. Epic browser. Okay. I, I can't render an uh, opinion on it because I haven't used it. So, interesting. Uh, it does have some drawbacks, though. We tested it using EFS Cover Your Tracks tool. Default privacy settings weren't much better than Chrome. Oh, man. Oh, no. How? How do you have a privacy setting where the default privacy settings aren't better than Chrome? Like, what? Okay, well, we'll still maybe look that up. I'm still partial. He's from Kansas. He can't be that bad. Oh, jeez. Was there... Did I see a Norton icon in the footer? Oh, is there? Is there one? Let me see. No, I didn't see... Oh, my gosh. You did see a Norton icon in the footer. People still do this? What, they hire a web developer from 2003? Like... 
How does that even happen anymore? Okay, we can't take Epic Browser seriously. Man, I really wanted to like the guy. He's He grew up in Kansas. That's where I grew up. Although, how did he grow up in three states? His dad must have been in the military or something. Anywho, it is Norton Safe Web protected by Symantec. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> All right, so yeah. Eh. All right, best private browser for you. Um, Brave, that's what I'm using right now. It's not so bad. Their Tor feature in Brave kind of sucks, too, by the way. Tor browser does a better job than the Brave Brave Tor, if you're, if you're unfamiliar. There's a new private window with Tor. It works, like, just not, not very well at all. Tor browser works infinitely better. Uh, Waterfox, again, same thing applies. I, I prefer Lib LibreWolf more than Waterfox. Waterfox, I know sometimes their forks, when they fork it, they, they stay on a stable release way too long, and I'm more worried about them. Uh, they're downstream. They take a long time to pull back from the Firefox project. So, yes, they're private, but the security aspect is a bit more prob problematic for me. Opera... Um, I hate Opera. It's just absolutely the worst. They are just no. Don't don't ever use Opera. They, I think it was their privacy or their their mobile one where they preyed upon all their users and were soliciting high interest loans upwards of twenty or thirty percent per month uh, on their APRs. So they were soliciting like almost these. I think they were credit cards and just awful awful company so opera don't ever use anything from them terrible and then molvad still new i haven't used them um molvad vpns i did talk about uh i'd say molvad is one of the last independent vpns on the market you don't hear a lot about molvad vpn on youtubers because they have no affiliate revenue meaning they don't give youtubers any money so any security channel you watch on YouTube will never recommend Molvad because they are missing 30% of the cut. Example, ExpressVPN, if you signed up using my link for them, which I, I'm no longer sponsored by them, and I don't have a link anywhere for them anymore, I don't think. If I do, I'll take it down. But like, let's say you sign up for the $100 a year for, for their... I would get 30% of that cut. So I get $30 for every person that signs up for ExpressVPN for the full year at $100. So as you see, if you get 1,000 people signing up and a $30 a pop, well, that's that's $30,000 in that YouTuber's pocket. So why would they ever recommend something that doesn't give them this kind of commission? This is YouTube affiliate sales in a nutshell that no YouTuber will ever talk about because they literally would be shooting themselves in the foot because some, especially in the security realm, when it comes to VPNs, they make the most money off of these affiliate sales because the rips are huge. These commissions are massive. And uh, that's that's why the VPN game is as it is. But if you actually do want a decent VPN, I don't even recommend Molvad, honestly. But if you're going to pick one and you're thinking that that's a good thing, that's fine. But I would highly recommend just going with something different, you know, making your own VPN. But yes, no, I, I when it comes to VPNs, like for security and privacy purposes, going to a like let's say a hotel or a public network, typically you'd want to establish a VPN to try and encrypt your traffic, but you can do that to your home network using WireGuard, using OpenVPN. You can set up your own free one, and that way you're working off of your home network instead of that public network that can can have some bad stuff happen. And so from a security privacy point, that's really the only time I'd recommend a VPN, but I wouldn't pay for it. Uh, so that's the thing. And there's also been instances where these kind of these VPN services can be w working like honeypots, uh, like it was, I think NordVPN had an instance where they had their data centers breached with out of band access for several months. And a hacker had full hardware controls of that, uh, uh of that whole server server bank, I want to say. So they had hardware access to all of the information going in and out of those 
those servers for for the VPN. So these people that were thinking they were being private and secure were actually would have been far better if they were just doing it on their own network. Having said that, most of us in the IT realm don't use VPNs for anything I just said for privacy or security. Torrents and geo unlocking, that's usually what these VPNs are good for. Let's just be real. It ain't it had, has nothing to do with security or privacy. That's why these VPN services exist. So that is the gist of it. And as far as privacy browsers, <sighs> pick your poison. There aren't any good options. But hey, maybe mobile bad browser will come out and I would love to try it someday. Probably not today. So that's my take on browsing privately and securely. <laughs>